This was a school ran by teachers and professors where the students got to learn how to be teachers. They also had a daycare where students got to learn how to take care of kids. It's, it's wild to me this was on a college campus. Between this and when I went to school, that building had been torn down, that school had gone away, and they built the new Irby Hall that I knew. If it weren't for a yearbook, I would have no idea what campus was like before I was a student there. History is so important because otherwise you may not know. In 30 years, you guys will be adults. You'll be out doing your thing in the real world. Kids who come after are going to want to know, what was, what was this school like when it was new? Let's show them together. Sometimes history can change on you. So when the school year started, they had no idea their town was going to hit by a tornado. But when it happened, they thought, we must cover this. This is important. And they did cover stuff even if you can't plan ahead for it. Capture the history of your town. We can ignore that, sorry. And the last piece of a yearbook, the fourth piece or purpose of a yearbook, is we are somewhat a public relations tool. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't mean that we whitewash things, right? If a team loses, a team loses, and you have to talk about it in a book. But it also gives you a chance, your book gives you a chance to showcase the good happening in your school. Too many kids, or parents I should say, old people, complain about kids. They talk about the youth today and how horrible you guys are. I know that you do amazing things. I know we have some amazing teenagers who are going to go and change the world someday. I truly believe that in my core because I'm with you guys every day. But not everyone sees that. So a yearbook does allow us to show some of that good stuff. Prove teenagers aren't that stereotype. Prove the old people wrong. Let the book shine a light there. Again, though, teams do lose and bad things happen. Students might die in a murder. I pray that doesn't happen, but I experienced it in a small school. Bad things do happen, and sometimes you still have to cover the bad things. But try to find a positive spin when it's all possible. If a team loses, that's okay. It happens. But talk about the steps they took to try not to be as bad. Talk about the, the camaraderie they built together. Find the positive. We can ignore this. Um, you know, kids, again, do amazing things. And when you look at the spread, I love to talk about books that were popular at the time. But a group of popular kids at this high school had a party for those self-contained students. These are students who are severely disabled, and so they stay in the same classroom all day, and they're learning basic living skills like how to do laundry, really basic stuff. Well, the student body, student council got together, and they wanted to have a Christmas party with those kids because they wanted those kids to get the normal experience of a Christmas party, just like all the other kids got to have. And so they did it. The yearbook showcased that. That's a piece of public relations that no one else would have known about had the yearbook not covered it. Find these stories and make sure people get to hear them. Sometimes it's bigger though. Sometimes it's not necessarily happy, but it still deserves to be covered. And what do I mean by that? Um, this was search, search shortly before or after the last election. And there were women marches happening because they were worried about the rights they were gonna have um, under the current administration. I'm not taking sides on it. I'm just saying that was a concern. And so the teenager, teenagers in high school, they decided to use their voices too. And you can say, well, that's awful political. Should that be in the book? The book's not taking a side. What the book's doing is saying, here's teenagers doing amazing. Here's teenagers making their voices heard. And that's what we teach in school. That's why you're in school. We want to make you good citizens. This shows you being good citizens. Show off what your peers are doing. Sometimes it's just cute, fun stuff, like homecoming. People like to see happy things. They like to see stuff like homecoming proposals and prom proposals. It makes people see teenagers aren't just whatever the old folks think you are. You're young, you're still doing good things, but you're having fun. Show that off. Public relations, it involves showing the fun stuff too. So notice it's about the classes you offer. So oftentimes people complain about schools today, right? They're not teaching anything relevant. I hate reading about how we need to have home ec. 
We may call it something different, but we still offer home ec and we still teach kids how to cook. You just have to choose to take the class, right? Showcase those offerings. Let the public see that we offer welding or here we offer medical professions or drone technology or any of the other amazing things we offer here at Southwest. Let's show the world all the cool things we have here. This is a really great example of having something negative happen but finding the positive. So the headline is, on their own, drum major leaves band after director leaves. Their band director quit midway through the marching season. He was just like, out, sorry, I'm out. Well, normally that would end a marching program. That would end the season. That's a negative thing. But yet, does it need to be covered that the director quit? It does need to be covered. It happened. It changed the way the program operates. But here's what's important. They found out that the drum major stepped into the role. The drum major made sure the season didn't end. And so even though it's negative and that the band director quit, quit, what's important is we found a way to show the positive still. So it's not ignoring the bad, but it's also finding the good. Four purposes of a yearbook, what are they? It's an education tool for you guys. It's how you learn to be better students, better technology users, better publishers, better writers, better photographers. It's education. A yearbook is a reference tool. It shows who was here and what they did. It shows official records like sports scores. It's a reference book. A yearbook is a history book. It showcases what life was like in the school, the city, the community, the nation, maybe even the world from your perspective. Because the news doesn't cover what teenagers think. You guys cover what you think. You guys shine that light. And lastly, it's a public relations tool, okay? It's a way to show the positive happening here. It's not just the positive. Again, if something happens, you cover it. You're journalists. But it's a way to show the positive too. Those are the four purposes of a yearbook. When we think, do we need that in the book? This is what you need to think through. I'll give an example. When you think of the mugshots, the portrait pages in a yearbook, well, of course you need that in the book. It's a reference book. It shows who is here. But then when you think to yourself, well, let's do who's who. That's really cute. People love who's who. Most best smile. I hate who's who. Um, best smile is just a popularity contest. Cutest couple, popularity contest. They'll probably uh, break up before the book even comes out. Um, I just had never liked it, but my kids liked it, and so we had it for a long time. But when we started looking at the yearbook through the purposes, we realized it doesn't help you learn anything doing who's who. It doesn't serve as a reference point because there's no official title of best smile in the school, right? That's not an official title given by Little Rock School District, so it doesn't serve as a reference. It doesn't serve as a history because it's just a popularity contest. There's no actual criteria that says, here's how you rank best smile. Now, valedictorian, that makes sense. That's an official record that falls under reference in history. We decide as a staff, best smile probably doesn't fall under there. And so as we use these four purposes, it helps guide us in determining what goes in our yearbook. Uh, because if you can answer to one of these things, it should be in there. If it's not one of these things, it probably shouldn't. So that's the purposes of a yearbook in a nutshell. We're going to use these four things to guide us in our decision-making this year. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.